what is nitazine and uh, sure. what, what should we know about this substance? Okay, great. So nitazines are a group of synthetic opiates. Uh, you can think of them as similar to fentanyl, but they're not fentanyl or fentanyl analogs, which is obviously what North America has seen in their overdose crisis for a long time. But they are opiates, they're synthetically produced, and they have entered the drug supply in 2020, 2021, roughly, was when they were first detected, but just little blips in the United Kingdom. And now we are seeing them more systematically in the UK, in Ireland, uh, and in parts of the United States and yeah. in Canada. What about Europe? Pieces. Uh, Estonia, again, there'll be tiny blips, but a lot of the drug checking services that do exist across Europe aren't detecting them systematically yet, so we don't think they're impacting the heroin or other drug supplies at current. There is a reason for the rest of Europe to be worried, which is obviously the news around the banning of opium production in Afghanistan, meaning that eventually something's going to have to come and take the role of uh, that opiate in the sort of heroin market. So can we say that this is a kind of product of the prohibition system? Yeah, I would definitely say so, especially where we're seeing it in the United States right now, um, as we're seeing increasing bans on precursors for fentanyl and fentanyl analog production, something's going to have to take up the space of that as well. And without safe supply and without comprehensive opiate substitution therapy access, it just creates a vacuum that another synthetic opioid is really well posed to fit. What is the legal use of nitazine, if there is any? There isn't any for nitazines. So there, unlike fentanyl, you won't find like hospital prescribing or anything for nitazines. And who is producing this substance? This is where it's a little bit out of my field of expertise. I know that there's some production from China and there's also some precursor production from China. There's been a little bit of work done by someone named Josh Torrance on Twitter who has looked at some of the telegram wholesale groups uh, and the selling of sort of kilogram packages of nitazines uh, and those seem to be being shipped out of China. But I don't know if there's other production centers. Is nitazine something people will use willingly or it's, it's only like... Yes, definitely there is a small but potentially growing market. We, I've seen some nitazine, such as metanitazine, advertised on telegram groups uh, and so people talk about buying them intentionally on the dark web. Points of care testing, so like urine drug screens that you would do in drug treatment in the UK, they um, don't detect nitazine. So there's also a benefit there that if you are trying to screen negative on a urine drug screen but you do need opiates because you're an opiate dependent person, nitazines might make sense for you, but of course the getting the dosing right on them and that how much more significantly potent they are relative to street heroin that doesn't contain nitazines right now is still a real cause for worry. What does it do? Like, uh, how does it change your mind consciousness? Sure. So it is an opiate, so it's going to have the general sedative effect, pain alleviating effects. Uh, it will hold you if you're an opiate uh, dependent person from experiencing withdrawal. Anecdotally, many people who have had experience using nitazines have told me that the withdrawal they experience post nitazine use is quite severe. Some people have said even worse than fentanyl if they've had experiences of both. So once you start to use nitazines, you might be in a real predicament if you can't consistently access them in terms of trying to meet that level of tolerance that your body has with other opiates. And I've also heard people, again, anecdotally report more sort of like ill effects in terms of just like feeling really unwell while high, uh, losing consciousness when they wouldn't usually expect to for the amount that they've used. Um, so I think that it's a mix of dosing issues, potentially other cuts in the supply. We're seeing some xylazine also being mixed in with heroin that contains nitazines, uh, as well as benzos actually also being cut into that same heroin supply. There's a lot of uncertainties right now between what's nitazines itself and what's a general just like poison drug supply. What has been the response from government so far? In Scotland, we've seen a bit more proactiveness. There was a round table specifically around the threats of synthetic opioids. There is increased willingness, obviously, there's moving forward with a drug consumption room. There's going to be pilot drug checking programs in multiple cities. We've definitely seen Wetanos be really forthright in Wales, uh, that offers the national drug checking via post, uh, being really forthright with what they're finding and issuing alerts and information. In the English context, unfortunately, like we're still a little bit behind as far as the UK goes. So we have some areas that still do not even have fully functional local drug information systems. So we don't have a fully functional early warning system. There is progress being made ter or bleh, towards a national early warning system, uh, but it's very piecemeal still, especially when you don't have on the ground local drug information systems operating everywhere. We know that naloxone works as an opioid antagonist, so it reverses the effects of overdose. Yes. Can it work in case of nitazine? The good news is it will work for nitazines. You may need more doses. Uh, anecdotally, we're hearing that, uh, and so it would be good to issue everyone multiple kits of naloxone. 
but you don't need to issue multiple doses all at once. You follow the exact same protocol you'd be trained with for a normal heroin overdose, uh, which is a dose every two to three minutes and uh, using rescue breaths. One thing that is concerning with the nitazines that we're starting to see is obviously where there's also benzos and xylazine mixed into the same drug supply. Uh, and this is not just impacting heroin, but also illicit benzodiazepines, uh, where we're actually testing them and finding nitazines as well as uh, research chemical benzodiazepines mixed together into those tablets. Obviously, those folks are less likely to be carrying naloxone. Uh, and so we really need to do more to expand the public access of naloxone. With xylazine and with benzos mixed into that supply as well, naloxone won't work for overdoses on those substances. Uh, and if you have a mix of opiates in those substances, you might have a harder time bringing somebody back. Uh, and so the important thing again is the rescue breaths, or if you're in an area in another part of Europe where you have access to oxygen, the compressed cans of oxygen are what folks in North America have been using for a while now with the xylazine overdoses, and they seem to work well. Here at the CND, as far as I know, there is a re draft resolution addressing synthetic opioids. Do you think that's uh, efficiently addresses this issue? I think I still have some skepticisms, especially coming from the United States myself, just as an individual, again, not a policy expert by any means from that context, but we know that there's been previous issues with coerced treatment, the use of naltrexone, especially for people exiting the criminal justice system. I have worries about the actual access of OST when we know that, for instance, methadone access is one of the most protective factors against experiencing a fatal overdose. And so I think I have some hopes, but also some worries about the actual implementation and intentions around the synthetics. Uh, and I've already heard here from some U.S. colleagues inside events the increasing push to ban more precursors for fentanyl production. And again, my worry is this just creates a better vacuum for other synthetics like nitazines to come and fill. So what would be your message to the member states here at the CND? What to do? I think the sort of thing is a really comprehensive embracing of harm reduction. I know that I will sound like a broken record in this. We know opiate substitution therapies save lives and protect against fatal overdoses. If you have comprehensive overdose substitution therapies that are consent-based because coerced treatment does not work, and that have multiple options uh, that include methadone, buprenorphine, uh, but also include MST or MXL or diamorphine. This will attract the most number of people into those programs and away from the illicit market in a safe and regulated way.